is everywhere. The rest, the problem is the racism is in everywhere. The people we focus in football, it's not just in football, unfortunately. If it was just in football, we'll be safe, but the racism is in everywhere. Racism has no place in football, yet it keeps showing up in our beautiful game. Footballers have had enough. These are nine perfect responses from footballers to racism. Danny's move. Danny Elvez gets hated on a lot. No wonder. He's a natural born winner and a fantastic player with an outspoken personality. And he has no time for racists. During Barcelona's visit to Villarreal in 2014, Danny stepped up to take a corner and the home fans threw a banana at him. Despicable. Danny's response? He picked it up, ate it, and took the corner. We have suffered this in Spain for some time. You have to take it with a dose of humor. The move sparked a social media campaign with footballers all over the world sharing pictures eating a banana using the hashtag we are all monkeys. I'm sure that if that if players continue to react in that way, it will stop because people are trying to put you off, they're trying to upset you, and if you show them that you're not upset, they won't continue. Silence, please. Mario Balotelli has been the target of racism for his entire career. During the 2009 derby between Inter and Juventus, the Turin fans showed their true colors, directing insulting chants at him. There are no black Italians! They harassed him, whistled at him, and called him names we won't repeat. Mario burst into tears. He wanted out. Zlatan gave him some on-pitch advice. Don't worry, you keep playing and you will score and silence the racists. Balotelli showed his strength and did just that, running towards his fans in celebration while the old Deli Alpi Stadium fell silent. At their next home game, Inter fans held up banners that read, better to be black than black and white, in reference to Juventus. Turam leads the way. Est-ce que la situation s'est améliorée? Alors tout d'abord, lorsque j'étais enfant, il y avait déjà des bruits de singes dans les stades. Lorsque j'étais enfant, ok. Je suis devenu joueur de foot. Lorsque je jouais, il y avait des bruits de singes dans les tribunes. J'ai deux fils qui sont devenus joueurs de foot. Il y a toujours des bruits de singes dans les tribunes. One of Lillian's sons, Marcus, is a Bundesliga star at Borussia Mönchengladbach. When the news of George Floyd's murder by police hands shocked the world, Marcus was the first athlete to take a stand. After scoring a goal, he took a knee to honor Floyd and the Black Lives Matter movement. This was just before the practice was implemented as a pre-match routine by football leagues. In that same weekend, Weston McKenney took to the pitch wearing an armband that read, Justice for George. Enough is enough. Malian striker Musa Morega was harassed from the moment he took to the pitch against Vittoria Guimaraes. His crime? Being black. Morega turned hate into fuel and scored the decisive goal of the match, celebrating pointing to his skin. And that's when all hell broke loose. Seats were ripped off and thrown at him. And the referee booked him? Morega had had enough. He refused to continue playing. Rivals and teammates wanted to convince him to play on. They failed. I'd like to tell those idiots who went to the stadium to shout racist things, F you. And also, thanks to the referees for not defending me and for booking me for defending the color of my skin. Idiots everywhere. Fans always do that, you know what I mean? Just to disturb the, the best player, just to make him get angry or just try to make him out to try to help them team. But I think they're going wrong. and. The best answer of this, you just, we just have to look it, because as a player, when I was a feeling, when I see fans do that to me, that mean he, he don't want me to play, because he, you know, if you I play, I'm gonna make his team lost. And but Cameroon legend Samuel Eto'o was abused in an away match at Zaragoza. He wanted to walk off the pitch, shouting "No mas, no mas." His teammates, the rivals, the referee, and even his coach Frank Rijkaard convinced him to stay on the pitch. The same thing happened to Mario Balotelli with Brescia against Verona. 
Tired of the monkey chance, Balotelli kicked the ball into the stands, cursed, and refused to continue playing. The match was stopped, but only for four minutes before he was convinced to keep on playing. Taking a stand We need strong role models. If a player is abused on the pitch and wants to walk off, his team has to have their back. Moi, je me souviens très bien lorsque j'étais joueur de foot. Je rentrais dans les vestiaires et il y avait toujours quelques coéquipiers qui venaient me taper sur l'épaule en me disant "Ouais, Lilian, c'est pas grave." C'est d'une violence totale en fait. C'est pas grave. Alors, tu, tu sors d'un match, il y a des supporters qui font le bruit du singe, qui t'insultent, et un coéquipier te dit "C'est pas grave." A perfect example is the friendly match between AC Milan and Pro Patria, a preseason fixture in which Kevin Prince Boateng was racially abused from the very first minute. By the 25th, he picked up the ball and kicked it toward the racists. Boateng left the pitch, and so did his teammates, with the rest of the stadium applauding the gesture. Strength in Unity we all saw what happened in a match between PSG and Istanbul Bashakshir. Demba Ba overheard the fourth official talking to the referee about assistant coach Pierre Webo, referring to him by the color of his skin. When mentioning a white guy, you never say this white guy, you say this guy. So when you mention a black guy, you have to say this black guy? Istanbul refused to keep on playing with that fourth official taking charge of the game. And rivals PSG backed them. Both teams left the pitch and refused to come back. The match was rescheduled for the following day with a new set of referees. Players are becoming more and more politicized in terms of racial justice. And players are now more likely to do things like walk off. They are more likely to confront uh, someone who is being racially abusive or someone who is using racially loaded language. France's message to the world. The 1998 World Cup was a big deal for France, but not everyone was a fan of the team. It's artificial to bring players coming in from foreign countries and call this team France, said Jean-Marie Le Pen, the leader of the far-right political party in France. In his mind, it was a disgrace that the French national team was made up of the sons of Africans, Arabs, and other nationalities, rather than it being a perfect reflection of the modern culture of the country. France smashed everyone and won the World Cup, with the players coming from different backgrounds, led by the son of Algerians, Zinedine Zidane. An old woman, a bit after the World Cup, and said to, came up to me and said, I don't like football, I don't really follow football, but I would like to thank you. And I just said, why? Because she said to me that, apart from the liberation of, uh, of, of Paris, I've never seen that before. France's team of white, black, and Arab, as it became known, united a nation over football. Speak up. Moise Keane was antagonized throughout an entire match against Cagliari, and then scored a goal in the 85th minute. The best way to respond to racism, posted Keane after the match. But according to his teammate Bonucci, it was his fault. When he scores a goal, he has to focus on celebrating with his teammates. I think the blame is 50-50. The ridiculous statement was slammed by footballers and pundits on social media. Raheem Sterling, Paul Pogba, Memphis Depay, and Mario Balotelli all showed their support for Keane. It's a football match, people get emotional, but you know, to then be put down by your skin colors is, is, is completely wrong. Balotelli even left a message from Bonucci. Tell him he's lucky I wasn't there. This needs to stop. No one's doing enough. Um, I think there needs to be an extreme action taken. Until meaningful measures are taken, it's up to footballers and fans to take responsibility. You know, it's not just, oh yeah, our oh, black players saying this, oh, it's just that. I keep saying this. I don't want to have to have this conversation. I, listen, I don't want to be able to say, oh yeah, yeah, boom, them are coming at me because of the color of my skin. And it's easy to say it. It's easy to have a hashtag. It's easy to do a slogan. But if we do not have actions, it's literally just gonna be that. 
It is going to be a hashtag. It is going to be a slogan. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave us a like and please subscribe to the channel. Now, the voice is yours. Give us your ideas for new videos in the comments.